Welcome. In my Lombardi Live full-length interviews, I'll be talking with many of your favorite drummers so you can learn secrets to their success. In the Spotlight series, you'll discover classic moments from hundreds of hours of original shows and lessons that are on drumchannel.com. Today we're going to get a surprise answer to the question, what is funky? See how two of the funkiest drummers around, Zigaboo Modaliste and James Gatson, answer that question. Then James and Tony Bronigal will get together to talk about the shuffle. But first, let's get started by spotlighting the Chili Peppers drummer as he plays in a big band and he just kills it. You won't believe it. Check this out.
Hey, I found some backstage footage when Chad walked off right after he played that song. He was so happy that it was over. I've never seen Chad this nervous before. Check this out. Your personality shown through all that. It was fun. Chad's right. I've person. seen you play a million times. I've never seen you play this shit. It was great, man. It was great. <laughs> it was <good. laughs> you see you going through it in your head. I know. I was going, whoa. It was beautiful. Thank you. It's well, great it to fun. see drummers get out of their own little thing and, and try something new. I was so far out of my neighborhood. I was in, I was in Zimbabwe, but it was it was fun. And, uh, you know, I did see a couple of smiling faces down in front. Oh, so, God, yeah, they love it. So, you know, that kind of helps. Instead of like, instead of one of these, you know, bounce out. Jesus. I don't like your new direction, Chad. You suck. I don't like your new direction. No, we ain't seen it. Spinal Tap. No, they were great. They he were, wrote were, this. Derek Smoltz, he wrote, he wrote this. this. No, bull you got one. They were all getting up to leave to take to get a hot dog. <laughs> they want to, they want to like eat before Neil comes on. They want to get a quick snack. Thanks. Dude. Well, congratulations, to Chad Thank Smith. You, Thank you. Glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I like you. I, I, I just was a bundle of. No. I couldn't relax. I was a bundle. I couldn't relax. The first song was like, well, boom, boom, like, okay, just. It's a sweet home Alabama. Know, That's all man. you gotta do. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, <laughs> 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 no, no, man. it was good though. It, it was, was really it was exciting it and was. grooved like it's crazy. It's just your personality. It's I know. So I know. And I guess it doesn't matter how we out. feel because if we well, see, felt, I was telling you this thing. You yeah. were like, ah, ah. yeah. But I, I was, you know, that. I'm just. And I, I love you, but I'm just out. I'm just listening to it, going, this is, this is. Wow. Well, both you guys. This is wow. This is, both you guys brought your personality to the music, and that's what it's about, man. Everybody bringing their own sound to what's happening. Oh, it's easy for you to say. You get out there. You put, I am so. <laughs> I am so ready to do yeah, this. I know. I bet you probably like. After watching yeah. eight drummers, no. are crazy. Well, both you guys. This is wow. Okay, I told you we'd answer the question. What is funky? Let's find out. How would I put that? Funky. I think everyone is funky if they get to be heard. You know, I think that it's within the person that when they give the, give themselves. That's to me. That's being funky, uh, and uh, and and you can and people can relate to it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I thought, well, I say, well, hey, James Brown is funky, and then I start hearing other people that didn't play funk music as, as we would say James Brown would play. Yeah. You know, I'd hear some rock guys. Yeah. They funky. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that give to themselves, to me, that's, that's, that's the way I, I, I looked at it, you know. Uh, that's well put. I think that's a very you know, well put. That, I mean, good, good I, I, I have thought about that for many years. And when I start hearing other people, you know, when you get outside of yourself and you start checking other people out, and you see where their thing is. You say, oh, it, somebody got a thing, as, as we would say. You know, yeah, they got this yeah, thing. thing. Well, when you're giving of yourself like that, then we call it funky, uh, and it's a good name for it. You know, because it's uh, well, it's kind of a universal thing. It's like depth of so it's depth of soul. Right. When you yeah. dig down deep from your soul when you're playing a groove and the beat, you give the deepest part of your right. emotional content right. to whatever you, figure you're playing. You give so it's, it's to funny. where everybody it's feels that they, yeah. they can feel something, they can feel you. And you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You know, and great. so. That's great. When I first time, like when I first time I heard Zigaboo and them, I mean, I liked it. That's funny. I didn't know what to think. I said, man. <laughs> That's kind of beyond funk. This? Yeah, it That's was, funk. it was this. Yeah, yeah. I could feel it. I could feel it, you know. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it, but I could feel it. Yeah. You know. I, I think that um, drummers that are capable uh, spiritually of being able to recognize what is funk and, and, and what is not funk, yeah. it's a certain, if you know how to play funky drums, if yeah. you know how to play funk, then it's a certain rush that you get. It's mm. a certain rush you feel. So. When you hear somebody else playing funk, whether they have been labeled as a funky drummer or not, because you try to get that, you try to get that rush every time you play, mm -hmm. then I think you connect spiritually. Yeah. That's where you actually feel like this is this is real funk. Not that you're some authoritative figure 
or that, you know, you've been dissolved, funk, or anything like that. It's just that, you know, for yourself, if you start playing and if you do a track and it turns out funky, you're not even trying to do that. But it turns out that way because uh, I call it ism. Mm -hmm. The ism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is, uh, you, 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 you feel that, that deep down inside. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta push a certain way. I gotta have velocity a certain way. I gotta make this bass drum do a certain thing, and and uh, that's related to the snare drum, so it go push and pull. The dynamics of it. Just dynamically. Yeah. So you kind of, you know, your body English, and and you know sometimes you sit down in the, on the drum set, and once your your butt gets comfortable in the s stool. And you could do everything. You could hit all of these drums the way you want to hit them. You know, you kind of know. Nobody don't even really have to tell you, oh, Jim, that's funky. You, yeah, you, you know take it. that compliment, but you already know. You already know. Because it, yeah. spiritually, you've already contacted. You've dialed that up. I got to dial this up right now. Yeah. You know, ism, you know, Catholicism, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, I get it. it. Baptism. I get it. You know, it's it's one of them. That is 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 a ism that I don't know if all drummers have that, or if all drummers even connect with that, or if cats really think that. You know, Zig, you're full of it. It's no such a thing. But I just think that when I'm when I'm playing and I want to when I want to play some funk, I feel I have to call that up. That's from a roundtable on Drum Channel with James Zig, Jim Keltner, and Jonathan Moffat. You should definitely check that out. And next is from a DC Masterclass, The Story of the Shuffle, where Tony Bronigal and James get together and discuss the shuffle. They have recorded some of the most iconic shuffles of all time. What do you think about uh, the stumble, the Mississippi, and the... Uh in the flat tire, you were kind of okay. kind of <laughs> debating between the two of you. What what was what there? <laughs> well, we only debate. I mean, we're going to play it differently because James will play it his way. I'm going to play it my way, according to his experiences and me, according to my experiences. But basically, uh, this again shows you how different it is from city to city or region to region. Where one band leader would call it a stumble shuffle, which I call it, and the next guy is going to call it a flat tire shuffle. And while we were discussing this earlier, James goes, well, I thought that was a Mississippi shuffle. So, <laughs> so you know, we, the, the names kind of go all over the place, but the beat is, is kind of similar. Uh, the, 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 the type of shuffle it is is similar. I first remember hearing it in the intro of a Bobby Bland song, Further Down, Further On Up The Road, right? That was the, the, road, back yeah. and back and the yeah, intros right. like that. And then when it got to the verse, it went, romp, tum, tank. it went to a regular right. sort of shuffle, which... Uh, at the time, I'm not sure who that was, was playing. Drums. I have to look that up. Um, and then I also heard it on T-Bone Walker records because he, he used that a lot. Right. You can also hear that in, in uh, uh, Louis, uh, Louis, uh, Louis Jordan stuff, you know, going back even further where they played it. And so um, for me, I recorded that on a few records, and one of the records that I recorded on was a Taj Mahal record. Uh, I think that... No, that one got nominated for a Grammy, but we did uh, The Hustle Is On, a T-Bone Walker song. Okay. So, and that was kind of up, but you, maybe the tempo has something to do with how, what you call it, you know? Maybe this is a stuff, and maybe this is flat tire. That's very, it, it, I mean, it, I, I'm just, yeah. I'm thinking on my feet right now. Me too. Or my butt. Yeah, I think so. Well, by the time it got to Kansas City, when I got it, um, boogie woogie. Ah. They had a, a that piano boom, players boom. play with their left hand. Boom, de boom, de boom, de boom, de boom, de boom, de boom. Play the octave. So by the time it got to the Midwest, play the Mississippi shuffle to this. So right. that's how I, my rendition of it. And I heard, and I heard it where it's it's actually kind of like a big, almost like a big band swing thing, like uh. Yeah. Where 
were you play, were you playing a ping a ling like right you know So it gets more of a big band feel like right. that, and then, and then you're hitting horn hits, you know. If it's right. if there's horns in the band, it's a it's a big more of a big band style to me the way I look at it like that. Right. But that but that flat tire is just it's undeniable, you know. It can, you can get real gut bucket with it too and make okay. it sound really you can really dumb it down, you know, make it. Sometimes your fills are born out of what you're already playing, right? right? I mean, because you're trying to keep it rolling when you're building dynamics to a point where you want to get to letter B, letter C. And sometimes your fills come right out of what you're already playing as opposed to, oh, what rudiment should I come up with now, right. you know? Well, the more the flat tire shuffle or the slope, the stumble. Right. When I heard it, it was, had a more of a 6-8 thing in it. Right. lot to do with it, you know. You know. And you can still hear the still hear the swell in it. You know, so it, you know, I guess as it got faster they had to reassemble. You know. <laughs> yeah, retool. Right. Were you playing the the shuffle on the bass drum there too? Just yesterday, I played on a Harvey Fuqua at a James track. Uh, the way you love me. Uh, you've, you've heard this song a hundred times. And, and uh, it, it starts out. And then when it gets, and then when it gets the chorus. The way So right. it was really cool. It incorporated both with the right. six eight, twelve eight. Well, that's six eight to me. But and and then the the stumble. Playing right. the uh, the shuffle on the bass drum, uh, which you're kind of calling the flat tire. Uh, I don't know if Peter Erskine knew that he had a flat tire back in the weather report days, but we looked at a little bit of his lesson yeah. uh, this afternoon. And let's take another look at that again, and then comment on his interpretation of the shuffle. Okay. Let's Great. play that clip. Sure. Okay. Excellent. And if you're playing a really loud shuffle, like with a blues band or something, this works great. It provides just a lot of power and, and drive and, and, and a real soulful bottom to things. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the, the Weather Report uh, tune, Birdland, uh, we did it quite a bit faster than that. Let's see if uh, I can remember that tempo.
I'm going to get your guys' uh, comment on what Peter just played and how you mentioned as it was playing, Tony, that it, it's kind of a, a more modern version that is the same roots of everything we just talked about. What did you think about the way he was playing that shuffle and how it related to what you guys are doing now? Well, I mean, I, I, it's, it's not much different. I mean, you, you, you take the shuffle isolated the way he isolated it for you before and afterwards, and it's really no different than the basic form of what we're doing here today, uh, except that he's, uh, his left hand is something I, I mentioned, you know, to pay attention to what he's doing with his left hand because that's kind of uh, a little bit of how he's making it his. At the same time, that also fits into that thread about the 12-8 uh, thing that, that, that uh, James was talking about. You know, it's, he's catching some triplets on the, on the rebound there, and they're not really just ghost notes. You know, they actually are pretty much a part of the rhythm. Right. But he's still playing a shuffle all the way through, you know, and if you took that and put a, a big blues band or R&B band over the top of it, he'd be playing that shuffle, you know, with that band as well. And I bet a lot of you students here haven't seen Peter with his shirt off playing that hard, right? You think of Peter as more of the cool jazz guy, yeah. so take a look at some of those earlier Weather Report uh, tracks. But what, what that, I'm, I'm sorry, dinner, what, that, that, what that tells me is that this root of this rhythm, even though we're presenting it in a way that's in, in, involved with music is a little bit older than the rest of you guys out here, you know, from, from where we come from with it. It's still very, very important. And if you don't learn to play these things, you can't really play that kind of music. You can't play rock, you know, all of these, all of the rock and roll, everything, all American music came from what was played in the blues. Seriously, you know, what, what, what they played in, in blues and, and, and some Latin stuff out of Cuba and and the rhythms of New Orleans, uh, everything came from all those rhythms, you know, and, and nobody's made, other than maybe some fusion stuff that's in odd time signatures and whatnot, or something transformed or, uh, you know, transcribed whatever from Eastern music uh, from the other side of the world in odd time signatures and different uh, uh, syncopations. All the music that, that you and your parents and, and we're all, we've all grown up on and everybody, it, this... All those rhythms come from this root here that we're talking about, basically. James, when you did the show with us uh, a few months back, Jim Keltner called in, and he had mentioned uh, that he'd been chasing a hi-hat rhythm that you uh, played all of his life, and I, I think it was a Bill Withers tune. Do you, do you remember right, what that was he was referring right, to? Yeah, uh, you know, we were, we were playing a, a shuffle. The last, this was the last song on Bill Withers' first album that I did with him. Uh, I, not the Ain't No Sunshine uh, I can't think of the name of that. Just As I Am was the second album that he did. And the last song was called Kissing My Love, which was a hit record later on. But it started out as a shuffle. And I'm kissing my love. But the way he phrased it, it went into a, like a six bar phrase to where it was undanceable. So we had to get something together with that, you know, and we, I think this we had about 15 and you know, we didn't have that many minutes to, to finish the session because they had let him produce his own session, which they used to didn't let people do in those days. So I had to come up with... Yeah. But he was slow, so, so, I, so I had to say... You know, so if you could hear the shuffle on the top, you know, that was what it had come. The whole masterclass on drumchannel.com is about 40 minutes long. That's it for today. In our next Lombardi Live Spotlight, I'll be answering these questions. How many pair of tennis shoes would the godfather of drumming have at his house? A hundred pair? 500 pair or 1,000 pair? And did Buddy Rich really kick a bandmate out of his car in the middle of the desert? We'll find out from the victim. And on the serious side, you'll get some invaluable words of wisdom from Terry Bozio, Alex Acuna, Brandon Buckley, Kurt Pascara, and Thomas Lang as they answer questions they always wanted to ask each other. We'll see you next week at 5 on Lombardi Live and subscribe to our YouTube channel Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Drum Channel. And if you're not a Drum Channel member, take two minutes and immerse yourself in the drumming world. DrumChannel.com has everything you need to know, and it's a lot of fun too.
See you next week.